A close look at Australia raises many questions for the untrained person. Why does Australia have the most animals that are not found anywhere else in the world? More than 85% of the continent's population live within 50 kilometers of the coastal zone, and the rest of the territory is essentially abandoned and fenced off from people by fences with a total length of more than 5,500 kilometers. It is strictly forbidden to cross such a fence. Those who violate the ban face prison or a huge fine. Many facts hint that behind these fences, people are trying to hide some territory not marked on modern maps. It is possible that Australia and Antarctica are connected by a secret stretch of land that can be found behind these fences. For example, flights from Australia almost always lie across the coastal ice of Antarctica. Although, where is Australia? And where is the neighboring continent? And why is Antarctica also closed from mere mortals by numerous prohibitions and the International Treaty on Antarctica from 1958? What is hidden from us in the southernmost part of the Earth behind the lands of Australia and Antarctica? What huge territory beyond the South Pole did the American Rear Admiral Richard Burt speak about? And most importantly, how are these huge areas of land that we are forbidden to explore actually located? In this movie, we will answer all these questions. What's wrong with Australia? Well, of the 10,000 plant species on this continent, 8,600 are not found elsewhere on Earth. Of the 200,000 species of animals, almost 90% are unique and only found in Australia. So it's practically another world. It's like some kind of jungle on Alpha Centauri. Australia is home to some of the most dangerous animals on the planet. It is here that nature has invented some completely original ways of reproduction, marsupials and egg-laying mammals. It seems that local animals are nothing but the result of crossbreeding of various animals. It's as if somewhere behind the fences of Australia, they are hiding from us, a laboratory where genetic engineering was once practiced long ago. So it's no wonder that local Aborigines are constantly telling about themselves and other monsters that once lived or still live in the water and in the jungle on this continent. Now, let's take a walk along the legendary Great Australian Wall and try to understand what's wrong with it. In fact, it is the largest complex of fences in the world, which began to be erected back in the 19th century. The total length of the fence is 5,614 kilometers. In some places, the fence is energized, sometimes even powered by solar panels. But why are they needed? Of course, the authorities have their own version. Allegedly, these high fences are needed to protect nature from wild dingo dogs and rabbits brought to the continent, which, without natural competitors, have become a particular danger to livestock. In some places, there is even a double row of fences. Now and then, you can see guards on off-road vehicles who catch those who try to cross the forbidden border. If you look from a satellite, the whole of Australia is divided into several sectors. Curious tourists who try to playfully breach the perimeter run into serious trouble, from fines to actual jail time. So many researchers have reasonable questions about the real purpose of these fences. Research begun in 2009 shows that the fences are, on the contrary, causing problems for local nature. The surprising discovery is that the local diversity of small marsupials and reptiles, as well as plant life, is much richer, just where dingoes are present. This is most likely due to competition with kangaroos and a role in fox control, which means that fences, on the contrary, are creating an imbalance in Australia's ecosystem. At the same time, these fences continue to be maintained. They are constantly being fixed. They pay for electricity, they don't spare any money for paramilitary guards. So it's not about the environment after all. And cattle can be protected from dingo dogs by much more adequate and effective ways. Several articles on the internet with reference to a publication in Smithsonian Magazine tell us that a collection of strange photographs was found in the possession of a former assistant of Arthur Conan Doyle, a friend of the explorer Sir John Morris. They depict very unusual and even anomalous objects, inexplicable structures, representatives of unknown tribes and outlandish animals. According to some reports, 
This is the Amazon jungle, according to others' island Sumatra, and some believe that these are unexplored places in Australia. The landscapes in the pictures seem so fantastic, and the people are drawn so crookedly that some people think that neural networks are not without talent. They have long ago learned how to depict in detail what never was. For example, in this photo of Kurgan and many other interesting things, like some kind of flying object with a humanoid, when you reduce the contrast, you can see people. You can see that these are not real people, but just some clutter of spots. No faces, no hands, nothing specific. In this photo at high magnification, it also becomes noticeable that in the foreground, there are not people, but some mess of something unclear. Or here's a photo of some caveman. In theory, this too could be a quality fake because the web is now capable of generating any random human face that doesn't really exist. What do you think? Does it look like a fake? Or is there still a chance that in front of us are photos of the very real places and living beings that are hidden from us behind the great Australian wall? But even if we assume that someone decided to make a joke and there is nothing of the sort, it does not mean that there are no pitfalls in the topic of Australia. It is possible that with such fakes, someone wants to discredit the researchers who are trying to get to the truth. So let's not stop and continue to look further. If fences have been installed and maintained at the state level for more than 100 years, if there is a ban on crossing the border for people rather than animals, then what is the matter? What is being kept from us? Let's turn to the history of Australian exploration and try to find clues. If we look at ancient maps, it turns out that originally Australia was considered part of Antarctica. For example, on Gerard Mercator's map, it says Terra Australis non dum in the south, which roughly translated means not yet southern land. Or on Pierre Duval's map, it is listed as Terra Australis, south land. It crosses the so-called Antarctic polar circle. In the same 18th century, the studied lands of modern Australia were called New Holland, but its outlines in the southern and eastern parts were not defined precisely and were obviously drawn for a tick. Strangely, we still see the same indefinite coastline in southern Australia on maps today. Look at the detail of the coastline to the west and east, and look how little information is shown on the southern part of the map. For some reason, no population centers at all. A similar situation with this region of Australia remains to this day. There are no population centers here. Just for diversion, Google Maps draws us a bunch of small towns that visually even have a few major streets. But if we enter them using the panoramic view function, it turns out that this is just a highway that could have been photographed by Google Mobile anywhere in the vastness of Australia. So why is there no one living in the south of the continent? Maybe it's just that Australia is not a continent, but a peninsula that passes into Antarctica. After all, Australia is the only continent, as we are told, without a single volcano. And one more curious detail. In the southern part of Australia, there are snow-capped mountains, and there is much more snow than falls even in the European Alps during the peak ski season. Here, for example, are the slopes of Mount Kosciusko in winter, New South Wales in Australia. Who knows, maybe there is a secret passage to Antarctica somewhere nearby. But the most interesting thing is that airplanes flying, for example, from Santiago de Chile in South America to Australia, always fly over the ice of Antarctica. What is the problem to fly exactly from point A to point B without this strange art? Maybe the reason is that we somehow misplace continents on our maps, and therefore it seems illogical to us that the way to Australia is through Antarctica. Why would air carriers put extra kilometers in such a risky region? Isn't it because Australia is a part of Antarctica that protrudes closer to the equator and is therefore not so cold? Our video investigation would be incomplete without another equally sensitive topic, the topic of Antarctica. The secrets and oddities associated with it are no less. The name Antarctica comes from Greek and translates as opposite the Arctic, opposite the North. There are questions about air travel here too. And the most important one is, 
Why do airplanes never fly through Antarctica? It's so much shorter than all sorts of hooks halfway around the world. But no, they tell us it's cold there, strong winds and all that. Hang on, we can fly over the shores of Antarctica when flying from South America to Australia. But we can't fly over Antarctica, crossing Antarctica. If you think there's something wrong here too, put a like or argue your opinion in the comments. Maybe the whole point is that Antarctica is not quite a continent either, or the continent is not exactly the way it is drawn in textbooks and maps. And if it is not quite like that, then what exactly should be the map of our Earth so that it does not lie about the size, shape, and location of the continents? Could it be something like this or this? Or like on the emblems of the UN and other international organizations? Let's turn to the opinion of a man who visited Antarctica as part of the high jump expedition. This operation was organized in 1946, 1947 by the US Navy to explore Antarctica. The leader of the expedition was retired Rear Admiral Richard Burt. The operation began on August 26, 1946, and ended in late February 1947, six months ahead of schedule. Allegedly, due to the early arrival of the Antarctic winter. Richard Bard, in his interview, talks about the fact that a huge deposit of coal has been found in Antarctica. He also says that, first, Antarctica was a tropical continent, and second, Antarctic coal deposits are not covered by snow. And thirdly, the presence of minerals suggests that Antarctica was to be the subject of territorial disputes and claims in the future. But now we know that quite soon after the expedition, the International Antarctic Treaty was signed, which declared this continent a free zone. What could unite the competing countries? According to the Antarctica Treaty, no one except scientists and military personnel can be in Antarctica, aside from rare tourist flights. We see something similar in Australia, where everything is done to keep mere mortals out of closed territories, ostensibly to protect local flora and fauna, Maybe traces of a previous civilization that lived there during the tropical period are being hidden from us. Here, for example, we see a statue of people of some unknown civilization. And here we see stone ruins of some ancient city. And in this photo, if you work on contrast and brightness, you can see the second smaller pyramid. If these photos are not the result of a good Photoshop or the work of some neural network, but real photos, then we can guess why Antarctica was closed for curious gawkers after the expeditions. Obviously, the Antarctic ice hides from us unknown pages of our past and new territories unknown to mankind, about which, apparently, the special services of Germany, the USA, Great Britain, and the USR knew. It is not excluded that during the construction of their base New Swabia, the Germans have left a good legacy in these places. And if we take into account that scientists studied samples of the well at the Glacier Payne Island in 2,000 kilometers from the South Pole and found traces of swampy coniferous tropical forest, we get a striking picture. Tropical climate in Antarctica was relatively recent, about 1,600 years ago, not 90 million years ago. Why do we draw this conclusion? Because there are pyramids there, very similar to the pyramids of ancient Egypt. Historians, since the 15th century, have deliberately pushed the ancient world further back in time, adding an extra 1,000 years. This means that relatively recently Antarctica was home to a civilization that was most likely either a contemporary of ancient Egypt and ancient Rome, or their predecessor. Apparently, the Antarctic people had a cultural connection to the wonderful world of Australia and knew something shocking about our land's past. As usual, pump your brains, buy, 